Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm hopping on with some more yarn stuff. Um, thought I'd do a little chat while I finish up this bobbin. And uh, I am gonna show you a technique that I use um, to uh, do a one ball um, uh, spin. And um, I think I've done this in previous videos, but I thought I would uh, do it again um, just to sort of, it's something I use quite often. And it's a good it's a good technique to have in your in your repertoire that you can use. Um, so this is the fiber that, and actually, um, I still have more of it. <laughs> I uh, dyed and carded a lot of this, and my bobbin is pretty full. And the technique I'm going to be showing you is a one ball um, to uh, ply, and so I. I was going to finish all of this off and I thought this is going to get way too big and it might be too big right now. Um, we will see. I will show you all that on this video. Um, I'm just going to finish off this last section here. Um, I am on my Spinolution Monarch and I have the 8 ounce um, bobbin on right now and it is pretty loaded. And I am not um, doing any specific spinning technique with this. I'm doing more of a, um, a long draw method and this is going to end up being more of a woolen type yarn which I don't think I've done a video on woolen and worsted yarns which might be my next video. Um, and so when you talk about woolen yarns they are more airy. They are the fluffier and you get that by pulling back um, what they would call a long draw method. It's, it's, um, you're not using your, like to do a worsted type yarn, you really kind of, okay, I'm back. I got interrupted. The joys of working from home. Um, I was talking about uh, worsted and woolen yarns, hand spun, and when you do worsted yarns they're more uniform so you're using your in my case it's my right hand to um, to pull out and kind of smooth along which I'm doing right now a little bit smooth along the the ply and a, a woolen spun is where you kind of pull back and let let the uh, spin take in into the fiber up into your my left hand um, again we I don't think um, I don't think everybody spins the same way and so I think it's personal choice in regards to where your hands are at and um, so yeah that's what I'm doing today on this uh, I need to get this finished and then I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to pull out my ball winder and I'll show you how I do that and then we'll come back to the spinning wheel and finish up that. I thought while I was finishing this up I would do a little chatting um, while I finished it and uh, yeah it is we are I'm actually caught up on my videos. So this video is today is Thursday the 12th of October and it is beautiful out today. It is a beautiful fall day. Um, we've had some really dreary, dreary fall days the last few weeks um, and it looks like we're heading that way again. But um, So this video will go up tomorrow morning and it has been a very busy week here for me. I um, have spent most of the last three days outside uh, Monday, Tuesday, I spent cleaning out chicken coop and rabbit barn and rabbit cages and goat barn or the goat shed. Um, so everything is uh, clean for fall. So everything has been, and I think you saw that, I've been doing a little Wednesday video, just sort of like a daily vlog. And um, that one was up yesterday. You can go watch that. And I showed some of the stuff that I was working on. Um, in there and yesterday I also uh, went into the garden and my garden is still producing <laughs> I actually when I get done with this video I am going to go um, I've got tomatoes 
and I've got peppers to deal with, I've got raspberries to deal with, and so our garden is just crazy this year. Um, everything was a little bit late, like my tomatoes really were not ripe in August and September. Um, they kind of ripen towards the end of September, beginning of October, and so everything's a little bit late, but they're still going. I have pepper plants out there that are blossoming right now. I have, I have an odd random snapdragon um, next to the little cabin out here. I think there's a picture of that in the video too. Um, I don't know where it came from. It just suddenly was there the other night and it's all blue. It's blossoming. Um, so there's snapdragons on it, which is really, really strange for October. Um, so, and it hasn't been overly, the last few falls that we've had here in, in Michigan, um, our Octobers have been really lovely. We're, you know, like 60, 70 degrees, um, which is really nice. Those are the kind of temps that I love. And the last few weeks we've been 40s and 50s and rain. We've had a few 60s, but it's just been really damp out. Um, and they're saying we're supposed to have, they keep changing their mind. Um, they're saying we're supposed to have a very um, light winter. We will see. Um, I did find a woolly bear the other day, the caterpillar, when I was out cleaning barns and stuff and um, moving manure around out into the woods. Um, I found a woolly bear that was almost completely brown, which I don't know if I've ever seen one so brown. He just had like black tips. And of course that supposedly is supposed to mean that we're having a um, not a very harsh winter. So we will see, I don't know. Um, I enjoy winter to a point, uh, and then I don't. So if we could have snow November, December, and part of January, and then we kind of don't, I'm good with that. Um, I don't like winters where there just is no snow. Um, last year we had early snow. We actually had early snowstorms last year. Uh, we had, was it the week before Thanksgiving? Last year we had a huge snowstorm, um, which is unusual. We it reminded me of when I was a kid. Um, when I was a kid living in Michigan, we it seemed it seemed to me, and I think it it was this way. We would get snow in end of October, beginning of November, and we would have snow all the way through till uh, March, April. Um, we always had like a warm up in January, it seemed like. There was always a week in January where things kind of warmed up, but we always had snow. Um, my dad used to um, put, he used to build us ice skating rinks in the back, in our backyard. And they were, we're talking serious, like two by four frame, and it was quite a big ice rink. Um, and I just remember ice skating on that for you know months there was never a time where we couldn't use that and so winters have definitely changed um, but yeah we'll see what this year brings um, so yeah it's been a busy week with outside stuff and I haven't decided I could I'm I literally have about a million little tomatoes um, like the cherry tomatoes out there that I could go pick and I haven't gotten that far yet. I probably will go pick some of them. Um, I have a lot of green tomatoes that I could go pick and I haven't decided if I'm, I don't know if I'm in the mood for that this year. Um, I hate to let them go, but I have done so much canning and freezing and um, I'm kind of done with it. And when you have all that gardening stuff when it's chilly and wet out, it's not as much fun. So. We will see how far I get there. Um, yeah, so all the rabbit's cages have been cleaned and hosed down and sanitized for, um, I do those twice a year where I take the power washer out there and um, hose them all down, pull all the rabbits out, pull all the cages out of the barn, I hose the barn down. So all of that got done this week, which is a great accomplishment. Um, for me, that's one more thing. The last big thing I have on the farm is um, shearing goats, um, which I think I'm going to do that the end of next week. It looks like we have a weather break. We've got a bunch of rain coming in. 
um, in cold weather. And then towards the middle to the end of next week, it looks like we have a little break. And so right now I am planning on shearing goats next Thursday. Um, I will be doing videos of that and showing you all the things that I check on them. And um, my husband's actually gonna help me with that. We kind of tag teamed when we had the pike boar goats and he would hold them and I would do the shearing. I'm also going to my friend Bonnie's next week, I hope. Um, to help her shear so I can get a feel for it again. I've talked about that a little bit. And yeah, I think that's that's my last big thing for the season. Um, and then it's just a matter, I've kind of gotten back on my pattern of grooming every day. So I've been doing um, this week. <laughs> Remember I shear all my rabbits down in the summer. So um, they have been, they have stayed short, short haired most of the summer. Um, and so this week I have started my two a day where I take two rabbits a day and groom them every day. Um, and so I had four German Angoras um, that needed to be uh, German. Most German Angoras, um, you can comb them and get a little bit out um, at the time when they're ready for their fiber to be taken off. But for the most part, you have to shear them down. And so three of my four German Angoras are all sheared um, and I'll do the other one tomorrow so that in about three months I'll have to shear them again. So that's all done. Um, I have my website is finished. It's in the, um, it is live. You can go see the new website. You can shop at the new website. We're still um, tweaking a few things and um, trying to get everything to look right and so yeah, that is live. So I will be doing, um, I'm hoping to jump into that. I have a lot of yarn that um, I've been taking to shows and things with me this, this summer. Um, and I don't do a lot of shows, but I had a few things this summer that I did um, between library programs and a couple shows and a couple craft fairs. And so I have a lot of yarn that I need to get listed on the website that is not there right now. So I'm hoping to be working on that. Um, in the next, once I get through this, uh, the goats and get them done, then I can kind of focus on more of that kind of stuff. And so the, the website is done and working. Um, I have, uh, I'm working on a Christmas stocking right now. Um, I don't know if I've ever showed them here. I probably have talked about them before. I, I show them on Instagram every year. Um, but I was given a vintage this is probably this is from the 1970s early 1970 because I have all of grandma's notes on it so I was given by my husband's grandma um, the Christmas stocking pattern that she made for years and years and years like 30 years she made these Christmas stockings I'll have to do um, in another video I'll pull that out and show you but I have all of her handwritten notes um, grandma has been gone 12 years, 10, 12 years now, um, but prior to her passing away, um, a few years prior, she asked me if I would be interested in learning how to do them, and I was, and so she passed all the stuff off to me, and so I have a vintage um, Christmas stocking pattern, it's a big one, um, and it is personalized, so I put people's names on it. And it's just an old, not an old, it's a Santa Claus. It's a crochet, the whole stocking is crocheted. Um, and of course it's using red heart yarn, which you guys know is not my favorite, but um, <clears throat> the logistics of it is, is that it just is what it is. Um, and it makes a very beautiful Christmas stocking, um, very, very uh, heirloom quality Christmas stocking. And so every year I either am making a few of those, whether it be for new grandbabies um, or for um, people that want to buy them. And actually, almost every single year I have some of grandma's customers, old customers, call me up and say, I've had another grandbaby. Well, at this point, it's great grandbabies, which is kind of cool. Um, so I get orders every year from people that, uh, just a few. I don't do a ton of them. I would, at one point I thought, oh, I could make these all year round and sell these and this would be my 
my one thing that I did. But in all honesty, I get bored. <laughs> I am I am a terrible, I jump from thing to thing. Uh, hence why I have, I don't know, probably five different things behind me here that need to be finished. Um, I'm trying to get better at that, but I just jump to stuff. And so I've never... Um, I've never been able to achieve that goal of having a whole bunch of them made up. Um, maybe someday, maybe that will be my thing as I, as I slow down or whatever happens here in the next 10 years with the rabbits and the goats and everything, maybe that will be my thing, but not right now. Um, so I am working on one of those. I have an order from um, one of grandma's friend's friends. So, um, and she had bought them back in the day for her grandkids. So I think this one is either for a grandchild or great-grandchild. So <clears throat> I'm working on that. I still have my um, fall socks from last year that I'm working on. Um, and I am gonna finish these. I had hoped to get these done last weekend and I did not, but I am so very close. Um, I've gotten through the heel and I am just working my way up to the toes. Um, I already have one done. Um, it's all finished. I just have to uh, tie in everything, but it's all done. And actually the colors kind of match this yarn I'm working on a little bit. So I would love to get this one done because I have another pair of socks behind me that I would like to work on. I have two sweaters back there that I would like to work on. I've got everything balled up. I think I did that in the, uh, either an uh, Instagram thing or uh, here on YouTube I did a video of balling up all my sweaters and stuff so um, I have lots of projects that I'm hoping to sit down and work on and take a break um, we we had a long busy busy summer it was a huge summer and it's super interesting my husband and I were talking um, because we spent most of the summer outdoors in one way shape or form either working in the yard the garden um, working in the pond. We have a big pond that we, um, we stocked this year with fish and did a bunch of stuff with that. We did a bunch of landscaping this year. Um, in re landscaping in that the house was beautifully landscaped when we bought it, but we put um, trees in, we put more fruit trees in, we added onto our garden. And so most of this summer I have spent outdoors, um, literally probably eight to 10 hours a day. And then when we have this time shift, we don't have the time change until November, um, but it's getting darker quicker. And so where we were outside until nine or 10 o'clock every night, um, now we're in by seven. And it's such a weird, like it happened like that to me. Um, and I think it's just because we spent so much time outside this summer um, doing things. So I'm trying to get used to that. Um, I am not a good sitter. And so for me to sit and for hours and hours and hours, I don't do well. But I am looking forward to a rest this winter. Um, I'm gonna try to take that more seriously and <clears throat> do, some, do some work on my crochet. And um, usually if my hands are staying busy, I can sit for longer periods of time. So um, I don't even read well. I used to love to read and I would read book after book after book after book. And I don't even read well anymore. So I'm working on that too. I've got a couple books that I'm in the middle of that I really want to finish. Um, and I did get, speaking of books, I didn't want to talk about that. Um, this was mentioned by Shannon. And I'm not going to even attempt to say her last name, but she knows who she is. Um, she uh, mentioned this. She has a really neat Angora Marketplace on Facebook. You can look that up. Um, I think that's what it's called too. I think it's called Angora Marketplace. Um, but Shannon has kind of headed that up and she was talking about this book and it talks about the statistics of Angora back in the day. And um, right now a lot of Angora comes from places like China and stuff and it's not done well and it's been given a very bad name in regards to harvesting the wool and stuff. And so that's one of the things that I've always been a proponent of trying to change the mindset to that. Um, but she had mentioned this book, which um, this book is really small. I didn't realize when I ordered it, um, but it's the statistics of the um, Angkor rabbit wool back in the day and how much United States 
um, produced and all kinds of interesting statistics, which I'm going to kind of deep dive into and just see. It's fascinating to me. Um, so, and this was written in, I think, 1948, maybe. I want to say 1948. Yes, 1948. This was written. So they've just reprinted this this part of it. So I'm going to jump into that and see if there if it's video worthy um, to talk about some of the statistics. So. I think that's all I wanted to bring you up to date. I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to go get my ball winder set up and I'm going to uh, show you just a ball this up and then I'm going to show you how to ply it. Okay guys, I uh, just wanted to show you I have my um, ball winder up here. This uh, is like our bar counter that works really good for this. And then I have my wheel down here. Um, I'm just going to hook it up real quick. And I did want to mention, before I forget, um, I actually, um, when I got my Spinolution wheel two, week, two years ago is when I got my Monarch, um, I did not, it has wheels, and I did not put the wheels on it, um, and I found them the other day. Um, I found the wheels and put them on my we on the wheel. I found the wheels. I will show you in a picture. Um, and it's revolutionized carrying around this big, big spinning wheel. Um, so it's made it really nice. So if you have the wheels, make sure you put them on. Um, I don't know why I didn't. I just did not. And I probably will not show you. Sorry, I'm gonna crouch down here. Um, I probably will not show you this whole thing. I'll just kind of show you um, getting some of this on here. I don't know why this is so noisy today. Oops, that was my fault. Usually I don't do it this way um, because of this very reason. But today I'm kind of being lazy and I don't want to put this on my scheme wonder. So I am spinning it straight for my wheel. Um, I've just loosened up the bands. And I'm hoping that this eight ounces will um, fully fit on here. We will see, it may not. But I'm gonna put as much on here as I possibly can. And I think I'm probably going to pull out one of my other wheels to um, fly this onto. Now why? Huh. This seems to be making more noise than... I've only used this a couple times, but I don't remember it. Looking like that. So... I am going to finish this and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. I have a nice size ball. Um, I was not able to put that full eight ounce bobbin. Uh, I could have made this a little bit bigger. I decided not to. Um, I wanted to keep it manageable. So, um, and I will try to remember to link the, um, I did a review of the ball winders and talked about how um, my wooden one made this so compact and tight that it was hard to work from the center here because it was so um, tightly wound on there. That was one of the, the things that I did not like about my wooden ball winder. Um, and so essentially what you're going to do is just take your one bobbin that you've filled and um, put it into a ball. And then we're going to work from the outside edge. And this does take a little bit of practice. Um, it, it's just a matter of getting your hands working so that uh, it feels comfortable and you're able to control everything. Um, so you have the outside um, edge line and the inside line. Um, I, and I pulled out my Echo. Um, I'll shift you guys down here in just a second. Um, I am not sure if I am going to like this yarn. I haven't decided yet. Um, I tend to not like 
muddly yarn and I also tend to sometimes make muddly yarn so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that a video on that coming up here I have a few ideas for videos the worsted and woolen um, I still want to do the S twist and the Z twist and what that looks like and what it does for your knitting or your crocheting depending on what you're doing and then I also want to talk about um, muddied yarn and um, how to kind of avoid it and or if you like it I mean again everyone has a different opinion on stuff and everyone has a different eye for things and so if if you like um, you know that look then more power to you um, but I like um, I tend to like whoops oh I have to put on my new drive band hold on okay guys I actually had to switch out my wheels um, I don't have a replacement band my echo broke I don't have a replacement band so I'm gonna have to get one um, so I just pulled out my little polywog. I'm going to turn you down here in a second. But like I was saying, um, you get your your um, ball and you get the outside um, end and the inside end. And I let me shift you down here. Okay. And I think you can see that. And of course, I... Uh, spun these um, clockwise so I'm going to um, apply them counterclockwise and I hope you can see my hands um, I am actually letting the let's see can you see I'll move you up just a touch Okay guys, I had to flip you around um, that afternoon sun is coming in and it was putting a glare on my screen um, so you weren't able to see good. So I have, essentially I have the center here um, pointed towards the wheel and I have the outside edge kind of just looping around and this is how I'm playing. So uh, this saves, what this does is it saves you from having to fill two bobbins. Um, obviously, since you can see I have other things on this bobbin even, I am a bobbin filler. And so um, I always ran short of bobbins all the time. I was trying to unfill bobbins and um, sometimes they weren't exactly what I wanted on there. And so I, I came across this um, I can't even remember who first mentioned this but I'm like that is absolutely a brilliant idea and so it's not any um, more difficult I don't think once you get used to it it's not any more difficult than plying off two bobbins um, from like a lazy cater or whatever you use <clears throat> you just have to make sure that um, you're working both the the inside one or the inside one just simply comes out essentially but the outside one you got to kind of work around the outside of the bobbin it kind of um, whips over top of here and so yeah that's all it takes to do a one bobbin um, this would also work great <clears throat> I taught a class last week um, at a library I taught a drop, drop spindle class and I was telling them that this is a great way um, you can uh, drop spindle a big um, you know a spindle full of, of single plies and you can put it into a ball or you could do two spindles full um, of single plies and then make make a center pole ball like this if you had two of them from a spindle and then set them in cups and you could drop spindle them to ply them so that's a, another trick for that too um, maybe I'll do a video on that if I get ambitious with my drop spindle. Um, I don't like to drop, I mean, I shouldn't say I don't like to drop spindle. I actually really enjoy drop spindling, but once you've had wheels for as long as you, as long as I have, um, you get so spoiled by the wheels. But I do really enjoy drop spindling. There's something very 
um, relaxing about it to me. So I am just going to, hopefully this will all fit on this bobbin. I have a bad feeling <laughs> that it's not going to. I'm not quite sure how many ounces, like I said, I had a, um, an eight ounce bobbin. I think I only got about halfway through it. So me trying to get this onto this little four ounce bobbin that is half full is gonna cause issues, but we'll see if we can get it done. Um, I actually watched a video uh, I'm not sure if it was a YouTube video or if it was on this Benolution website. Somebody was trying to, or they did, um, spun some really bulky art yarns onto a, like a polywog. The polywog is a four ounce. Um, they spun some really big bulky and it's just a matter of getting it nice and compact and tight onto your bobbin here and moving, um, moving the yarn along your pegs and they did a really nice job of showing how to do art yarns and things. So yeah, that is um, that is my trick for saving yourself some bobbins. And, um, and actually, this is, this is quite simple. Okay guys, I hope this video was helpful and if you have any questions, as always, please put them down below. I'm always glad to help um, with any questions or answer anything. Um, if you don't already, please click the subscribe button and the like button to my video. It really does help me out. And I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I hope you have a great weekend and I hope you're getting to create something today. Bye. Mm -hmm.